Hey everyone, my name's Hani. I'm a doctor and now co-founder of a skincare line from London. Uh, on this channel we talk about health, beauty, skincare, education and everything in between. Today I'm going to be filming a very highly requested video on improving body hyperpigmentation, that is to say how to achieve an even skin tone throughout your body. This comes off the back of my very popular how to get rid of hyperpigmentation video which I'll link below if you haven't seen already. And if that sounds like something that you want to know more about, then please keep watching. So as I said, today we're going to be looking at improving hyperpigmentation on the body. There were so many comments asking for this video. You have seen in the thumbnail, I'll include some pictures here as well. Um, so I have a condition that predisposes me to allergic reactions. And unfortunately, as I wear a stethoscope around my neck at work, I had a really bad allergic reaction to said stethoscope and my neck broke out in a really horrible weeping rash and essentially turned almost completely black afterwards. Pictures inserted here now. And this is what my neck looks like now. So today I'm gonna to be talking you through exactly what I did and some of the things you can be doing to improve the hyperpigmentation on your body. So a quick disclaimer on the kinds of hyperpigmentation that this isn't a remedy for. So the first thing I want to talk about is acanthosis nigrocans. So classically, that manifests as these velvety feeling dark brown patches on the back of your neck, in your armpit, creases. You can have them on your groin, you can have them on your back. This isn't true hyperpigmentation. This is actually a cutaneous manifestation, or what that means is just a skin change that occurs as a result of insulin resistance. So that's something that's really strongly associated with type 2 diabetes and it's not something that's going to be affected by this skincare routine that I'm going to talk to you about. So if this looks like you or you think you might be suffering with this, the first thing is to go to the doctor and get the necessary blood work done to figure out if you could be insulin resistant as a result of diabetes or another condition. And the other thing you can do is change your diet. There is evidence to show that drastically changing your diet to almost completely cut out carbohydrates and sugar can do a lot to improve insulin resistance and has even been shown in some cases to reverse type 2 diabetes. Please talk to your doctor about this, but it is something that has been shown to help. But I say this with caution, please speak to your doctor if this is the case for you. So one of the most common queries on my previous video was what can we do about inner thigh hyperpigmentation? And the truth is, if your inner thigh pigmentation, as is often the case, is caused by your thighs rubbing together, then this routine isn't going to do anything for that because that pigmentation is a consequence of the inflammation caused by friction. And as long as those frictional forces are still there, that is to say, if your thighs are still rubbing together, you're not going to see any improvement in that pigmentation. So short of your thighs not rubbing together, there isn't any solution for that really. And Lastly, I do want to say that high pigmentation is normal, it's natural, it's not necessarily something that you need to do anything about if you feel comfortable with it, but if it is something that's distressing to you, I would like to just provide you with some options of what is possible. So now my disclaimers are out of the way, I'm going to give you a quick whistle-stop tour of why high pigmentation happens on the body and the agents that we're going to use to fix it. This is going to be very brief, I go into this in a lot of detail in my previous video how to get rid of hyperpigmentation, which again is linked below. I'll make it pop up on the screen now as well. So let's talk about why hyperpigmentation happens. So there are in general three main causative factors. So the first one is UV radiation. UV radiation from the sun triggers your melanocytes and encourages them to produce more melanin. So, and obviously melanin is the pigment that produces our skin color, but as often is the case, those cells can become overactive and produce too much melanin. That's cause one. The second cause, and I'm gonna go through this very quickly, is inflammation. When you have inflammation, so for me, for example, that would have been the allergic reaction on my skin when I had my stethoscope on my neck. That causes a certain type of cell called a mast cell to degranulate, which just means produce loads of this molecule called histamine. And histamine upregulates the production of melanin. And the third main factor is hormonal imbalances. So there's a lot of evidence to show, and again, I'm not going to get into this in too much detail as I've discussed this at great length in the previous video, but hormonal imbalances can also be a causative factor of hyperpigmentation. So the hormonal imbalance could be endogenous, meaning your body is producing the hormones and they're not in balance, or it could be exogenous, meaning as a result of hormones you are taking. So if you're on the contraceptive pill, for example, or if you take any hormones for whatever reason, 
the hormones in your body have to be kept within careful ratios and when that isn't the case that can cause hyperpigmentation things like melasma that happens in pregnancy uh, etc often really closely associated with hormonal imbalance that's a broad overview a very very broad overview of why it happens not going to get into too much detail but that is essentially how hyperpigmentation manifests on your body so I'm now going to talk about some of the agents we can use to prevent this process and I'm also going to talk a little bit about sunscreen and the other methods you can use to protect your skin against hyperpigmentation. And I'm going to link all of the products that I suggest below. So one of the most efficacious ways to prevent hyperpigmentation is to use antityrosinase inhibitors. So Tyrosinase is an enzyme that basically breaks down tyrosine and does this really long chemical reaction which produces melanin. And when that happens to a normal degree, that's how you get the normal kind of pigment levels in your skin. But in some people, and often in ethnic skin, that process happens far too frequently as a result of a trigger like inflammation, histamine production, UV radiation or hormonal imbalance where you're having too much melanin deposited in the skin. And so if we block the enzyme that enables this reaction, so going from tyrosine to melanin, the enzyme is tyrosinase that takes tyrosine to melanin. If we can just block tyrosinase, we can block the overproduction of that melanin that leads to hyperpigmentation. So I'm going to talk about kojic acid and why and how I use it to prevent hyperpigmentation on my body. So the next agent we're going to talk about is the alpha hydroxy acids. So the alpha hydroxy acids are essentially they are things that are chemical exfoliants. So what they do is they get rid of the dead skin and they increase the rate of turnover of your dead skin cells by literally essentially kind of just dissolving the top layer of skin, which sounds really scary, but it's the very, very uppermost layer, which doesn't cause you any harm. They also increase collagen and elastin production in the skin to make the skin look nice and plump. Um, and they can also help with water retaining properties of your skin. So overall, really good agents to use. So those are essentially the two types of product I'm gonna be talking about in terms of getting your body pigmentation under control. And I'm gonna talk about the specific products I use and why I use them. Now, the next really important thing I wanna talk about is why the skin on your face is different to the skin on your body and why my previous video, which was largely about the face, isn't super applicable to the body, although the general principles remain the same. So the skin on your body is, first of all, it's much drier than the skin on your face. It has fewer sebaceous glands. Now the second thing is the skin on your body, while the thickness of the epidermis on your skin varies by location, in general, it is consistently thicker than the epidermis on your face. So the facial epidermis is on average around 0.12 millimeters, and that's the average. So around the eyes in particular, the epidermis is, can be as thin as 0.5 millimeters, whereas in the rest of the body, the average thickness of the epidermis is around 0.6 millimeters, although it can be as thick as one millimeter in, for example, the back. And then lastly, the main way that the skin on your body differs to the skin on your face is that the time taken for the cell turnover, and what I mean by that is for a new skin cell to be produced, to go from the stage of being produced right at the basal layer of the skin, all the way to being flicked off as a dead, dry skin cell, the process of that is much, much slower on the body than on the face. So I'll include a little screenshot here where you can see how on the abdomen it can be up to 100 days, whereas on the forearm it would be 12 days, and on the face it would be much less. So on that basis, I kind of want you to understand why we can take a slightly different approach with the skin on the body than the skin on the face. The skin on the body is drier, it's thicker, and it replaces itself much less frequently than the skin on the face. So we can be a little bit more aggressive and finally, the third reason why the skin on your face is different to the skin on your body is the skin on your body turns over much less frequently. So what I mean by that is the time taken from keratinization, so a new skin cell to be produced at the basal layer, right to the point of desquamation where that skin cell comes off, it just flakes off as dry, dead skin. That process is much slower for the skin on your body than the skin on your face. I'll link a paper below. And so on that basis, we can kind of artificially speed that process up by using things like chemical exfoliants. 
And so that's why if you have a dark mark on your body, it often takes much, much longer to fade, you'll find, than a similar mark on your face. And it's because of that reduced turnover time, the reduced exfoliation of your skin. And so that's why we can take a slightly more aggressive approach with getting rid of pigmentation on our body than the pigmentation on our face. So because of this fact, the fact that the skin on your body is much drier, much thicker, and the cells replace themselves much more slowly, it means that we can take a different approach to getting rid of the hyperpigmentation on our body than hyperpigmentation on our face. So we can use products that have a higher percentage of active ingredients. And the other thing really critically is it's good to find products that come in large sizes or are inexpensive, just because you're covering a much larger surface area than you are on your face. So that's the kind of thing I'm going to recommend. Lastly, as I said before, sunscreen is going to be a very important part of this routine, although I have an alternative method to protecting yourself from the sun if you don't want to constantly be reapplying sunscreen on your body. Moreover, as many of the active ingredients I am going to mention make you photosensitive, that is more sensitive to the sun. And we already know that the sun already makes hyperpigmentation much, much worse. It is imperative that you use sunscreen. Alternatively, and this is this is like low-key my preferred method, I because my high pigmentation was on my neck, I would just wear very high necked tops at all time while I was doing this routine because it was really essential to protect my neck from the sun. If I wasn't gonna wear a high neck, so I literally would wear a high neck top at all times, like probably insert some pics. And if I wasn't gonna do that, I would put sunscreen on my neck. And it's it's important to reapply that sunscreen every two hours as well. I think there's one of the joys about treating body pigmentation a lot of the time you have the option of just covering your skin so if i was treating a patch on my chest for example just making sure that that patch is never exposed to the sun through clothing is a really straightforward alternative to wearing sunscreen so the first thing i'm going to recommend is this soap this is called koji san soap so this is a kojic acid soap kojic acid is a very potent tyrosinase inhibitor so it's going to help with this pigmentation through the first mechanism we discussed where it blocks the enzyme that produces melanin now i find this soap way 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 too irritating for the skin on my face it's so drying my skin literally feels like it's tingling but on my body it feels fine and that's what i mean about the body on your skin being and that's what i mean about the skin on your body being much thicker and much more able to withstand some of the more irritating ingredients shall we say so i literally use that soap i keep it in the shower because it just comes like that i, I keep it in a little box like this one so if i can open it okay mine is wet because obviously i literally literally used it this morning but there we go and i just keep that in the shower and i just put a little bit on the areas so for me it was my neck and i just let it sit there for a few minutes while i condition my hair and then i rinse it off if you do use this you will find that it is very drying on the face but on the body, I find that it works really well. So the next product I wanna recommend is an alpha hydroxy acid shower gel. I use this one. It's by Mario Badescu. It's called the AHA Botanical Body Soap. I think the alpha hydroxy acid in this is a bit ambiguous. It doesn't really say, but it implies it's from citric acid. So from grapefruit and other fruit extracts. Mario Badescu is not one of my favorite brands, and this product contains perfume, but in general, I don't mind perfume in skincare if it's on a wash off product. The perfume isn't really on your skin long enough to sensitize the skin, or at least that's what works for me. I personally cannot really use perfume in anything that stays on the face, like a moisturizer or a serum, but in a shower gel that works just fine for me. And I find that this is just a gentle alpha hydroxy acid that with a loofah just helps me exfoliate some of the dark patches and i found that this works really well and it's quite cheap which is why i recommend this and then the last product i'm going to recommend to you is another alpha hydroxy acid and this i love this one because it's such a big bottle and it's really quite cheap and this is the ordinary glycolic acid toning solution and this i literally put on a cotton pad and i'll just swipe it on my neck and leave it on when i go to sleep and glycolic acid is a really potent alpha hydroxy acid it's not one that i normally use on my face although you can the reason i prefer not to is it has of all the alpha hydroxy acids it has the smallest molecular weight and that means it penetrates really quite deeply into the skin and it works quickly 
for my the skin on my face which is really sensitive that's not the most ideal so i prefer other alpha hydroxy acids so like lactic acid or mandelic acid but i think that's really perfect for the body where you're kind of having to penetrate much deeper anyway because the epidermis is thicker um, and this is really cheap it's like a nice big bottle i don't know if you can tell so i you know one of my top tips i really recommend this so the next question i'm sure you're asking is how long does this really take to work so in general when using new skincare it takes about one to three cell cycles to see results and by cell cycles i mean the process of a cell being produced at the basal layer to that same skin cell being flicked off as a dead skin cell and so in the average person a cell cycle is normally around six weeks and so it will take between one and three cell cycles to start seeing results. Now, as we said, because the skin on the body is thicker than the skin on the face, it can be longer. Now, having said that, we are using products that are stronger than the products we would use on the face. And so on that basis, you may find it takes a similar amount of time if you follow this routine. Now, critically, just to give you a summary of what you want to be doing, you want to be minimizing the triggers that produce the hyperpigmentation. So that's UV exposure from the sun, that's inflammation. And if any of these products give you a rash or you have a reaction to, or you have an allergic reaction to, you wanna stop using them because inflammation causes more hyperpigmentation. So UV radiation, inflammation from any cause, allergies, etc. And then lastly, if you have a hormonal imbalance, going to see your doctor. Thirdly, the hormonal imbalance. And if that is the case, you might wanna to speak to your doctor about seeing what you can do about those are you changing some of the medications that you're on if that is the case or anything else that might apply to you so as i said the key thing is like identifying the trigger and trying to minimize it secondly using the products i've suggested but then lastly making sure that your skin is protected from further sun damage so that's either using sunscreen or completely obscuring the skin from the sun with clothes which is personally my preferred method so I feel like that was quite lengthy, but I feel like we kind of got to the crux of the matter. I hope it made sense. As I say, I've got a very detailed video on the subject that I've linked below. I've linked all of the products below and hopefully this is the beginning of you having a more even consistent skin tone throughout your body. So I hope you find this video helpful. I'd love to hear any comments and suggestions on any more videos you want to see. And as always, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Even when I don't reply, just know that I've read it. I literally read every single comment and it means so much to me. So I'd be really grateful if you did. And I think that's all. Take care, guys. Bye.